Oh, Maron, Maron, Amelia. Maron, Amelia. My Portnoy is back on Drumio with another great video. 108,000 views in eight hours. Oh, as I am. Train of thoughts. 2004. Yes, baby. Went slow and then built up with speed. Rocking a Dramio t-shirt. I think his sitting position has changed a bit during the years. Looks like the snare drum is a little bit lower. Wow, I love the cymbal choke. And it's so good to see him again playing this music after all, all, all these years. Yes! Did you notice how he stepped prepared on, on the seat, like stepped forward a little bit preparing for the drum solo section? Let's go! Your classic Mike Portnoy outro. <laughs> I can't believe I get to say this, but to all of you out there watching, please welcome the legendary Mike Portnoy to Let's Drumeo. Go. Finally, Ooh. we made it happen. I hope people don't think Dromeo's cashing in and they're bringing me in because <laughs> I'm back at Dream Theater now. This We've had this on the calendar for months, yeah. way before this was announced. And my time here was going to be concentrating on mostly everything I've done yeah. over the last 13 years. But once the news dropped, you hit me up and it's like, we got to pivot, we pivot, <laughs> pivot. How did that all happen? What's the story? Yeah. And I remember Jordan we Rudis was out. We want to know. It's been many, many years now of kind of rekindling my relationships with the guys, uh, starting with John Petrucci. You know, the families were still close, so John and I inevitably uh, reconnected and on, on, a, on a personal level. I guess it, it really started to gain some traction uh, during COVID uh, lockdown. I couldn't tour and Dream Theater couldn't tour, so yeah. John decided uh, he wanted to do a solo album and he asked me to play on it. We did a, an LTE album with, yeah. with John and Jordan, so that brought three of us back together. LTE uh, is Liquid Tension Experiment. And then uh, the, the following year, I ended up doing John's solo tour, and then I think the final piece was um, me reconnecting with James Labrie, because mm. I have to say, ever since I saw the news that Mike was going, was playing on John Petrucci's solo album, and then they got together again with Liquid Tension Experiment, I thought this is probably going to, to happen, and it did. I went to see Dream Theater play in New York, I guess around 2022, uh -huh. and that was my first time seeing James in over a decade. I'm not exaggerating, within five seconds of seeing each other, it was hugs, kisses, yeah. and it was like any of the drama cool. and bullshit that happened during <laughs> yeah. all of those years of the split it, it just melted away immediately be with the people you love and play the music that that is part of your 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 life and yeah. your heart and soul have you so, have you noticed he's got a tama tattoo on his left arm the way the whole band went about the news and the transition was yeah. just done with the highest amount of class because i mean how I many examples are there of the way it was all handled was just like Top notch. I agree. So, I, it's, it was yeah. nice to see something like this happen. I was really glad to see how well he took it. Yeah, and, that was uh, very cool. I was a little, you know, concerned about that. You know, I feel a bit for Mangini. I had the chance to meet him in person at a, a drum clinic that he hosted here in the in the south of Italy. I even gifted him of a bottle of wine. Such a cool person, and uh, obviously a crazy player, but. I can see, you know, the band Dream Theater was created a certain way back in the days with uh, the original members and uh, Mike is not just the drummer. I've seen a lot of comments on social media about people comparing the two over the years, but especially now people asking, is Mike Portnoy going to be able to play Mike Mangini's parts? It's not about skills behind the drums, it's more about creativity. Mike Portnoy is a master in terms of creativity. He used to do a lot of stuff for Dream Theater, not just play the drums, but he was in charge of 
as for what we know of all the creative process, designing the, um, the artwork, uh, creating set lists, and obviously writing, writing the music and the lyrics and all the stuff related to marketing. Mike Portnoy was really the, the one member that was carrying the band forward. When they lost him, they kind of, I think that the band kind of wanted to show everyone that they could do it without Mike. I mean, it's, it's exciting anyways, don't get me wrong. I'm so excited to have him back. I'm such a huge fan of Mike Portnoy. The reason why I play Tama drums is because of Mike. This guy got me into drums, literally. It was all about, okay, we know we love each other. We know we want to play together again, but what is the new dynamic going to be? Because for all those first 25 years, John and I produced the albums together. We kind of led the band together. I was handling the bulk of the responsibilities yeah. and cre you know, decisions making and things like that. And so when I left the band, you know, I was very much a control freak. Mm. And then <laughs> now the last 13 years or so, obviously they- Is it probably the reason why they split? You know, when I left the band 13 years ago, I was a control freak. Absolutely, I'll be the first to admit it. But then there's other areas that I'm more than happy to step away and not even be involved with. I'd be happy to not write any lyrics again, mm -hmm. huh? uh, which is what I, I used to always write a lot of lyrics. I think the biggest one he did was a change of season dedicated to his mom who passed away when he was a kid. I think she passed away in a plane, a plane crash. Yeah. Pretty much after the new year, the focus for me is going to be Dream Theater and yeah. going to move into the studio and start work on a new album. And Let's go. Uh, it remains to be seen where and when the first gig or gigs will be, but yeah. I, that's what I'm most excited for. It's I cannot wait to be on the stage again <laughs> me too. in front of the, the most devoted fan base in the world. Yeah. And that, the energy and the excitement that that first gig is... I'm, I'm getting goosebumps right yeah, now just thinking about it. It's going to be insane. That. Mike, please come to Italy. I went to the first gig of Mike Mangini. The very first gig they did with Mike Mangini was in Italy, in Rome. Crowd was crazy. We all loved it. It was very strange for all of us, mixed feelings, because we all Dream Theater fans were missing Mike Pornoy behind the drum set. But I think we gave a great welcome, warm welcome to, to Mike Mangini and he did a great performance there. I remember it so clearly and uh, it was great. 2011, I think it was, July 2011 in Rome. So please, Mike, for your comeback gig, would you like to come back to Italy? We're going to go back to the second record, uh, Under a Glass Moon from Ooh. Images. All right. Let's do it. I haven't yes. played this in a long time. <laughs> well, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally f*** myself up. <laughs> but I haven't played this track, Under a Glass Moon, and last time I played it on stage with Dream Theater would, would be the last time I sat yeah. behind a kit and played it. So let's, uh, let's see how it goes. Let's see. <laughs> this is a great song. I love it. Man, this feels so good. Watching him play this music again after all those years. Wow. Bow, bow. Can't stop. Yes. You still got it. <laughs> yeah, it's still it there. definitely like does. Like riding a bicycle. <laughs> I think when people are first introduced to your playing or when people think about your playing, probably one of the things that comes up the most is all your hand to foot quads or those types of oh, ideas. Cool topic. Who did that come from? Or is that some idea that you just came up with at some point or? Well, I'm the one that's played it out for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, but I would say I probably got it from Terry Bozio. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, Mike is a huge fan of Terry Bozio, John Bonham, Keith Moon, uh, Neil Perth, and uh, Ringo Starr. A lot of his playing was inspired by those uh, five drummers, and you can actually, if you know how those drummers actually play, you, you can hear that. Uh, I still loved everything Terry did beyond that. Also, Missing Persons, the first Missing Persons album, Spring Session M. Yeah. There's a lot of that. right there is almost that's, the beginning of Paradigm Shift. Yeah. And, you know, that's become kind of the Mike Portnoy cliche at this point, but yeah. I think I copped it from Terry first. Can we just take a second to look at that Tama drum set? It's beautiful. The finish is gorgeous. 
Why don't you talk a little bit about what you've been up to? I think the list of bands that I was currently in was around six or seven. The busiest, I should say, would have been the Winery Dogs, yeah. uh, Neil Morse Band. I have three different bands with Neil. Uh, we, you know, we started Transatlantic back in 99. Yeah. I went to watch Transatlantic in Milan, and I think it was probably 2010. They used to set up the stage with the drums to the side. I went around the stage, I went to the side because I wanted to have a super close view of him. The first project outside of Dream Theater I heard with you was the Nightmare record with Avenged. The Rev passed, I think, in December of 2009. Mm -hmm. That's uh, another band that got a huge boost, at least here in Italy, thanks to, to him. I went and watched him also with Avenged Sevenfold again in Milan. Uh, the first gig they, they, they made in Italy after he joined the band. The venue was filled up completely. And they met with me, it was only a few weeks after the funeral that they met with, secretly oh, wow. met with me and asked oh, me wow. to do the album. So it was a very emotional record to make. Is this the setup you think you're gonna go into the next era of Dream Theater with? This? No way. This kind of version? Or Hell gonna, no! Uh, <laughs> what, what, what's, uh, what's the idea? Come on, you, you know <laughs> with Dream Theater, more is more. Unless you're Kevin, and then it's Kevin no more. <laughs> I guess that was a joke about Kevin Moore there, a former keyboard player. But yeah, going back to Dream Theater, it's gotta, I gotta go bigger. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. Tell us about Panic Attack. When's oh. the last time you would have played this? I know the answer to your question. The, the last time I would have played, I would have played this would have been 2010, summer of 2010. Okay. We got used to some crazy music over the years. Animals as Leaders, Polyphia more recently. Back in the day when uh, Octavarium was released in 2005 and Panic Attack was in that album, it was, it was like, whoa, these guys are crazy. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Man, that China sounds amazing. It's incredible that he's really playing the songs for the first time after a long time. Difficult songs, I mean, remembering everything, all the parts, the transitions, tempo changes. Uh, Mike said Octavarium was heavily inspired by news. This is a very cool part here. Basically a double bass, ostinato, and then he changes the pattern with his hands, but the bass drum goes. It's a challenge to play this one, even physically. Crazy ending. Oh, Maron, Maron, me. <laughs> Madonna mia. I got spray off after that one. <laughs> Madonna mia. Oh. <laughs> Uh, honor thy father. Uh, yeah. Yes. What's uh, we want to know? Just a demo of that. I'm sure we everyone would love see. to see. Oh, yeah. uh, well, I'll have to do it off the top of my head. So sure enough, I'm sure the internet will kill me if I <laughs> get it wrong, and I you very and well both. might. Back in the day, this was one of the most requested intros. People were like, were like on YouTube, "Oh, can you play the intro of Honor Thy Father?" Oh my God. I think it's this. There's one more. Crazy. I think he played one more. So, so just go out there and do I, that. I, I may have gotten the, the top wrong. I yeah. think I just did uh, six rounds. So I... Yeah. I think I did six. It may have been yeah. five. And the other one is Welcome to the Family. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, that's really uh, it's similar. Avenged it's very Seven similar. Fold. I played you the, the original Avenged demo of yeah. that song. And with all due respect to the Rev, I'm sure he would have come up with a killer drum intro. Yeah. But the demo just starts like this. <laughs> just just the downbeat. Really? It's crazy. They gave me free reign to uh, come up with my own thing. But. It's similar. It's very, very similar. I think it's like. Yeah. It's, it's similar to one. Honor Thy Father. Very, yeah. very similar. Mike, thank you so much for being here, for sharing your stories and your wisdom with all of us. And a huge congrats oh, for thank you. rejoining Dream Theater. It's, yeah, I never thought thank I'd see you, the Mike. day. And, uh, it's crazy. It's still wild. crazy to even hear that. Yeah. This album means so much to me. You can see how fluent he is. I mean, he's really at home when it comes to improvising these kind of parts. Of course it's, oh, look at that. Of course it's pulling tricks 
out of his own hat, the same, you know, it's, it's his vocabulary, but the way he sounds, the way he puts it together, it's, uh, for anyone who loves the genre of progressive music, progressive rock and, and metal, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Still is great. Oh yes! Well that was great guys, a fantastic video by Drumio. Thank you so much guys for putting this together for us Dream Theater fans and Mike Portnoy fans. So happy that he's back in the band after all these years. Can't wait to see him live. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, definitely like the video and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.